Good morning, folks. Ray Bissett from the Firm U Private Personal Training Facility. I'm here with James, one of uh, my clients. We'd like to share, he's agreed to share some of his information on his results and what his goals were and uh, where we are today. So how's it going, James? Good. Good. Just got done a uh, big chest workout today. Um, your bench press is more than, you know, it's almost quadrupled since you first started. Um, and you're doing four sets of uh, over 200 pounds uh, 12 times. It's pretty good. It's not just one bench, one rep. So, right. so we do opposing muscles, chest, back, and uh, we did some abdominals and, and core work too. But today we also uh, weighed James to find out where he is on the bioimpedance scale. Now, it's, you know, anybody could say, hey, listen, you lost 24 pounds, but where did it come from? Did it come from muscle? Did it come from fat? Or did it come from water? And most people lose a lot of water weight, and, you know, they think they're congratulating them themselves, and they think that, you know, time to celebrate, and they just gain it all back. Well, here at the Biopedon scale, I can accurately tell you, you know, was it fat that you lost, muscle, water? Did you gain muscle? Uh, and the last thing you want to do is lose muscle. So anyway, let's go through the numbers. When James started on May 1st, he weighed 247 pounds. Today we weighed in, and he weighed in at 223. That's a uh, 24 pound difference there. So he lost 24 pounds. How you feeling? Clothes fitting better or worse? Yeah, yeah. Much better. <laughs> Good. Uh, that's a lot of fat. But I got to tell you, folks, there's a lot of. It's not just losing. Or, I'm sorry, that's a lot of weight. It's not just losing that, it's number one, learning how to keep it off, and number two is did you lose any muscle or water with it? That's the most important part, because if you're losing muscle, you're losing your ability to burn fat at rest, and that's the whole science behind what I do here. That's why you can work out three times a week and not do cardio in, in between, because you're in a state of uh, uh, catabolism and anabolism, meaning building up, that's called your metabolism. And that's what I work. So you're actually working out 168 hours of the week, not just three hours. Um, James, elaborate on that. Do you, have you really changed your diet a whole lot? How's your, how's your nutritional intake? I, I probably eat a little bit better, but uh, I do no cardio. So okay. On, on the rest days. Right. So before I was doing a lot of cardio and it wasn't working. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Cardio is going to really burn sugar. Uh, which is fine, but then again, if you go back and eat sugar again, and you're defeating the purpose. What's great about weight training is when you break down the muscle, muscle loves sugar, number one. So all of us, when the glycogen, which is the sugar stored uh, in your muscles, when that breaks down after lifting weights, it needs to be replenished. And if you have sugar in your blood already, boom, it goes into the muscle. You start freeing your blood up of sugar. And when you free your blood of, of sugar, your body's forced to use fat for energy, and your body's preferred form of energy is fat. So it only makes sense. You know, if you don't get down to the science of the way, uh, the physiology of your body, the way it works, and put it in the weight training, you're not even doing cardio. I don't do cardio. I only do cardio for the last month, getting ready for national uh, bodybuilding shows. Okay, and that's, I'm getting my body fat down under, into the single digit, so it's different. But anyway, so we're down to 24 pounds. So, what about your body fat percentage? Well, when you started on May 1st, it was 36%. Now you're down to 32%. So that's 4% body fat. That's, that's really good. And the thing is, is that you're not killing yourself, right? By, you know, starving yourself, uh, depriving yourself of, of, you know, especially during the holiday season. As long as you're lifting weights, again, you know, any sugar you take in is gonna go right into your muscles. So. Um, your fat mass. Now, this is one of the most important numbers. This is actually the number of pounds of fat that James has lost. He started out having 89 pounds of fat. Now, when I say 89 pounds of fat, you say, oh my God, where, would I, where am I storing this fat? Well, it's marbled throughout your body. It's not in one spot. Sometimes it feels like it is in one spot, but it's not in one spot. Anyway, so he lost eight, uh, he was at 89 pounds of fat. Now, he's down to 70 pounds of fat which means he's lost 19 pounds of actual fat out of the 24 pounds that he lost, which is excellent. Okay, here's the best part, the kicker part. He um, also gained a pound of muscle. 
Now, anybody that says they gain more than uh, a pound of muscle in a year is probably blowing smoke somewhere, or they're on some some kind of chemicals that are are pretty hyped up. Okay, so to gain a pound of muscle is very hard. To lose 19 pounds of fat, well, you can tell me, but that wasn't that hard. It wasn't like you, you know, it wasn't like uh, you're. It wasn't that difficult. So anyway, um, and your water weight is about the same, and that's what makes up the difference for the 24 pounds. So he did lose a little bit of water, and it's in the morning time, a little dehydrated. Um, so that's where that comes from. So anyway, um, also James uh, has offered to share his blood results, blood test results. Now I use that here as an option. If you want to get a blood test by me, and it's a very comprehensive blood test, and we go through um, things that your, your normal physician would not do unless they had a reason for it. They look for disease. I look to prevent disease. Or if it's there, we can repair it, like diabetes, prediabetes, insulin resistance, uh, high blood pressure. Those things are so easily fixable, it's not funny. It's not funny at all. It's, it's you know, exercise is a prescription too, all right? And it's the best prescription that you'll ever get advice on. And it lasts for the rest of your life. You know, this is an education. It's not just, you know, uh, a trainer standing over you, counting anywhere from 12 to 20, okay? Anybody can do that, okay? Now, on this blood test, first thing we look at is glucose. That's the sugar in, uh, in, in the human body. And um, James is under 100, which is where we need to be, okay? Uh, that means he fasted all night, didn't eat, got his, uh, uh, blood, blood drawn at LabCorp, and that's who I work with, um, and he, um, his body is processing sugar very well. Okay, so we look at his liver, kidney functions, and everything is really good, okay, compared to what he had before. Then we're looking at cholesterol, okay, his cholesterol was at 267, which is, you know, it's kind of a red flag, but some people naturally have high cholesterol. It depends not so much on the, the number of the cholesterol. It also, inflammation has a lot to do with it because inflamed cholesterol is really bad. And your LDL, which the medical uh, field says that that's the bad uh, cholesterol. Um, it's an HDL, which is high density lipids. And that is your considered your good cholesterol. If that ratio is off, that's when there's a little bit of an issue. But anyway, so uh, James went down from 267 to 245, okay? It, it's not a huge drop, but it's a pretty good one because it was his low density lipids, which is the LDL, that went down. It went from 206 to 179, okay? That's pretty big. So his eating habits have changed. The, the weight training has really helped, and um, so he's good there. Um, Hermetocrit is the thickness of your blood. Um, James has chosen to go through uh, uh, hormone therapy, and uh, sometimes your blood will get a little bit thicker. And all you have to do is, uh, Hermetocrit is just the thickness of your blood, and sometimes your red blood cells will go up. Uh, given blood is the best way to bring that down. Okay. So we go on. Okay, testosterone levels. Um, again, like I mentioned, uh, James has chosen to go through uh, hormonal therapy, so he's optimized there. That's why he's gained some muscle, and he's strong as a horse, and um, you probably feel a heck of a lot better, too, and, and not so tired and drawn out. Uh, a lot of people that have low testosterone, I've seen people that have taken this test, guys, where their testosterone has been lower than some of the women I, I know. So, and they're dragging their butt around. You know, and that's the reason why. I'm on HRT myself, hormone replacement therapy. And, you know, I get, I get to the gym at 4 o'clock. I leave at 8. So, you know, I'm rocking and rolling. So, and you don't see me falling asleep now, do you? All right, here we go. So we go to your A1C. A1C is a measurement of your uh, glucose, which is sugar, uh, for, three month, for about a three-month period. So it gives you an average. It's also a, um, part of a decision maker if you're diabetic, pre-diabetic, um, so he, he is really good on this. He was 5.1 before, now he's at 5.0. Uh, five, for an example, 5.7 and above, or 5.6 and above is pre-diabetic. 
6.4 and above is full-blown diabetic. And also, I've taken care of a lot of people that were diabetic and are not diabetic, and it's mostly through weight training. Now, there's a, a drug called metformin. In conjunction with that, that works great too. But I don't get you on any kind of uh, medication. I shouldn't say myself. The physician that I work with, we don't get you on any kind of medication that we're not going to get you off of. Okay, we're not going to give you something and you're on it for the rest of your life. The whole purpose of the medication is to get you through where you need to be to get you healthy and then get off it. Um, through the blood test, the DHEA was low. It was at 225. The range for DHEA, DHEA is 102 to 416. Now, uh, James has a, um, a number of 406. So he's gone up dramatically, and we do that through supplements here. Pharmaceutical grade supplements, I might add. Um, what is DHEA? It is a precursor for testosterone, your natural testosterone. So it's needed in the human body, and also women need it too. By the way, I do have two blood tests, one for men, one for women. Obviously, your uh, 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 prostate or your PSA is not going to be on the women's test. Um, but James has got a great prostate, really good. It went actually from 1.3, which is fine, down to 0 0.8. So you're rocking and rolling in that category. And as you know, uh, a lot of men die of cancer of the prostate. Not really die of it, but die with it. Uh, so anyway, let's move on. Vitamin D, your vitamin D was really good because we had supplemented anyway. Um, it was at 61.4. Now he's at 71.5. That's optimizing your vitamin D. I can breathe on you, spit on you, I shouldn't say that. Uh, you're going to be well protected from the inside out. Vitamin D is responsible for your immune system. Well, folks, well, how important is that now in these days? Having a, a, uh, an optimized um, immune system against uh, the, uh, the virus that's going around. Okay, so you got to protect yourself not only from the outside in, but protect yourself from the inside out. And if I had to do one or the other, I'd rather protect myself from the inside. Because I want my immune system to fight. What do doctors think we don't have an immune system anymore? You know, you know. I, if I get the uh, a virus, am I worried? Heck, no, because I take care of myself. It's the people that have uh, underlying conditions and don't take care of themselves are the ones that are at risk. I shouldn't say they are at risk. Everybody's at risk, but um, your chances are better if you're in better shape. Okay, and that's true of anything. Okay, it could be the flu, it could be the uh, uh, common cold. Uh, my next marker here is C-reactive protein. By the way, these that I'm saying, most doctors don't test because it's not covered by insurance. Okay, that's why they don't do it. More than likely, they know about these markers, but they don't do it because it, it costs the insurance company too much. If they find something, they'd rather find disease and then give you a medication than prevent the disease in the first place. Okay, in most cases. All right, C-reactive protein is a marker for inflammation. Inflammation is the start of every disease you will have in your body. Okay, so you, this is so important. And I've caught this, this number being very high in some of my clients and literally saved their lives because one lady had four stents put in because she had a high CRP or C-reactive protein. And she went to her uh, general practitioner. They sent her to a cardiologist. EKG was off. Uh, she went through an angiogram and found... Um, that they put four stents in her heart because of this test right here. Okay, she had no symptoms whatsoever. She was also a smoker too. But anyway, James's number is um, 1.53. Anything under three is good. He's at 1.53, so he's not severely inflamed or anything. Um, and that's why I'm not so worried about his cholesterol for right now. And that is through diet mostly. Anyway, now he's, his uh, CRP is 0 0.51, which is one of the best CRPs I've seen. That's very good. So he's he's got a good protection. Uh, his vitamin D is very good. So he's rocking and rolling. Um, next important thing I like to look at, and doctors don't normally test for this, is insulin. Insulin is probably the most important hormone if you're trying to lose weight. And I mean specifically just lose fat. If you're having a problem losing fat, the reason is insulin. Insulin makes things grow. It makes two things grow. It makes fat grow, and it makes you. It makes muscle grow, and especially muscle. This guy behind me right here, I can tell you, I'm not saying for sure, but there might be some insulin action there. Okay. Um, 
But anyway, insulin can help you, but it also can prevent you from losing weight. If your insulin levels are too high in your blood, you cannot burn fat for energy. You are always going to burn sugar. Okay, and if you're not eating, your liver is going to supply the sugar. Okay, it's going to fake out the pan pancreas. The pancreas is going to start secreting more insulin, and you can't get rid of insulin. Okay, so starving yourself is not going to make you lose weight. All you're going to lose is water. Get on the scale. Say, oh my God, I lost well, five or six pounds. You know, my clothes feel a little bit better. Well, it's all temporary because as soon as you start eating again, you know, kabam, you go back to where you were. So anyway, that pretty much concludes all the uh, progress here. Um, and what about other benefits that you're finding? Just normal stuff. Um, my waist size gone from about 42 to 36. That's you didn't tell nice. me that. Holy shit. <laughs> how, do you, how do you keep your pants on? I have to keep my new ones. Wow. Wow, that's great. Um, uh, how about uh, any other, I mean, your range of motion and things like that. You know, I got people just getting in out of the car. They're saying that it, it's become easier. Yeah, I'm, I'm just doing better over, overall, I would say. Mm-hmm. That's great. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, if you're a single guy, it helps too, right? Yeah, it hurt. <laughs> okay. Anyway, Rainbow Set signing out. Uh, if you like this uh, this channel, subscribe to uh, uh, to Ray Bassett. And um, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. All right, so James and Ray Bassett signing out, and we'll see you next time.